Okay, so I'm going to show you how to glaze today. Uh, I have the instructions up on the board here. We're going to walk through that. Uh, first of all, use newspaper for easy cleanup. I have newspaper on the table already. Newspaper you can find in the corner over there behind the screen um, up, on the, up on the counter. Uh, keep that underneath here because the glaze does want to, it's hard to wipe off of the tables if you get it onto it. It's a lot easier just to crumple up newspaper and throw it away. Do not put the newspaper back in. As much as I love people who recycle, I don't want you to recycle then because all it is is the next person who pulls out the piece drops that glaze all over the floor too. So crumple it up, put it into the, into the garbage. This is reusing again, so, uh, so we are making another use of it beyond its first. Um, glaze the clay af only after the first firing. When the, glaze, or when the clay is actually pink, our particular clay turns pink at this stage. There are some clays that turn white. There are some that do other things. Ours has enough of what's in it that causes it to turn pink. Goes through actual chemical changes along the way. So the heat that it brought it up to now changed it to kind of a pinkish tone. The heat, when it gets a little bit hotter, is going to be like the bottom of this one. Um, basically it turns into more of a golden brown when you're working with it so that's just chemical changes along the way. Uh, don't glaze things, get used to what it looks like when it's this stage. This is just bone dry. This is just ready to go into the kiln for the first firing. The don't glaze it until here. I have lots of people who make a mistake throughout the year and they try to glaze something at this stage and not only are you potentially going to run into problems with how the glaze turns out later on, you also run into the possibility this is still just mud basically. So if you try to glaze it, you're going to end up breaking off your pieces pretty easily. Um, this has turned into the actual state where it turns into more like rock. So. This, by the way, is the most fragile state that it's at. So some people think that when it's dry, it's actually solid. It is absolutely not. It is so fragile at this state, okay? So uh, make sure you are at the right stage when you're doing this. Um, we don't have any white clay around anymore, so don't worry about that. Um, if there's too much dust or clay dust on the piece, you can wash it and then glaze it the second day. So sometimes I let things sit around, or for example, this one that's been sitting on the clay table to show you, there's fingerprints of mud on it. You can wash that mud off and then um, go back and glaze it the second day. Just let it dry out overnight so that it gets a chance to um, take all the glaze onto it the same all the way through it. These, if you left this here and there was mud pieces on it, basically your glaze would actually chip off of there as it was firing. So you need to make sure that you're careful of that. Um, so wash them, glaze them the second day. Uh, glaze tiles, and by the way, washing them too. Let's say I didn't like what I had done to something when I started glazing it and I decided to change colors or something along the way. I can also still wash this off and then go back and glaze it the second day too. Just dry it, let it dry overnight. Um, all right. Uh, the glazed tiles that are just inside the door over there above the clay table in there um, are what they will look like after they've been fired. Don't trust at all what they look like at this stage in the buckets. They don't look like this at all. They definitely go through a chemical change and trust what's on the tiles in there. Um, know that the thickness of the glaze will make a difference though. For example, this is the same glaze. Um, this is uh, sapphire blue over top of black and you can see that one did a lot of exactly what I wanted it to do. The other one is more kind of greenish color. Um, the greenish is because it was thin and it's letting the clay show through it. So you have to make sure that you're going with the right thickness when you're going with these also. Um, but trust those, what they look like. Um, the tiles don't come off the board. I have that note on there just so that you don't end up trying to force them off of there. They are screwed onto there and the holes just fit correctly for that. So don't break them trying to take them off to look at them. Um, the sheet next to the glaze tiles is the list of the glazes if they're runny or thick. I do have that here. I'm just going to show you quick up here. So these are some of the glazes that we have. So black stays put and it's thick. Blue ice um, is incredibly runny. So when I write up there that it is incredibly runny, know that it wants to slide right off of the piece. So, and I'll show you how to glaze that so that that doesn't happen. But I've got kind of different stages of saying that it stays put 
or whether it's runny or whether it's incredibly runny. Be careful if I say incredibly runny. Um, there are a few up here that we're, we have relatively new glazes that I'm not 100% sure yet how they react, so I'm getting more used to them. But ask me if something's not on here. Dragon's Breath is our newest color, and I'm getting used to what that will do with the glazes. So um, for the most part, that one's a little bit runny. It's not horribly runny. So, um, so these are here. There is matte colors, by the way, too. So like the Mazarine blue is a matte color. That means it has no shine to it. So sometimes people like that, and sometimes people are disappointed. They thought that it was going to be shiny when it was done. Um, make sure you notice that, that that's on there. Um, so, um, and like for example here, metallic green, I've got, doesn't run much, but it depends on what it's, it is with. Um, some glazes, like if it's over the white, metallic wants to run quite a bit. Um, I'll show you that combination. I happen to have one here to show you. So this is metallic green over top of the gloss white, and you can see that it ran a bunch. You get little streaks, which looks really cool, but you have to be careful on the outside walk a little closer with this so you can see what the bottom looks like. The bottom has had to be um, ground off. So basically, you don't want to have that happen. This could have stuck to the shelf and broken. Um, I did get it off the shelf, which is OK. But I had to go in and grind it, which never looks quite right. So try to avoid, if you can, needing to grind this off. Um, so uh, those are the glazes. Here. Okay, let me get that to the right spot again. Okay, thick glazes will fill any writing or shallow depth, um, shallow decorations, especially on the inside. So if you want decorations to show up, like on this one, I've got the, the push in things showing up quite a bit. If you want them to show up, you need to make sure that you don't go too incredibly thick on what you're doing so that you allow those to show up again, um, especially when the glaze lays over top of it. Some of you have pretty thin markings on some of your um, first pieces that we did. Make sure that you use a very runny glaze or make sure that it's super thin on it, one of the two, and you'll be able to see through it. Um, be aware of that when you're making your decorations too. Be aware, especially on the bottom of a piece, that glaze runs down and kind of puddles there. If you want any decorations to show there, you need to make sure that they are super deep or just don't even put them there. Put them up the sides and the glaze will run past it and it will show up again, so, um, so that's good. Uh, I already mentioned matte glazes don't shine. Iron red, I just put on there just to let you know, iron red is our most staining color that we have here. So. Be super cautious when you're working with iron red. If it splashes out on your clothes, you will have a stain. Um, it's literally iron that is in it. Um, that iron, I, if you accidentally splash when you're doing things and stuff like that, just be very aware. Um, we do have the, the aprons that you can put on while you're doing this. Sometimes people get a little too crazy when they have aprons on and think they can do anything and be as messy as they want, and they end up staining their clothes anyway. So if you have an apron on, don't think that that's your guard for everything. Um, Take it easy too and protect your clothes. Uh, all of the glazes that we use here are food safe and watertight if they're applied correctly. Um, you have to make sure you coat the inside of anything that is meant to be for food. Um, so this has a, a coating all the way on the inside. There, the outside has open areas. Um, that doesn't matter because the food won't touch there. So it's wherever the food would come in contact with. Um, and when it comes to the glazes too, by the way, they go up to 2,100 degrees. So they are meant to be capable of being put into the microwave or into the dishwasher. All of that's fine. I usually get those questions by the end of the year. Um, they're fine. Just be aware that the type of glaze here we use isn't quite as porous as some of the other glazes. That makes it very insulated. That means that it's going to be very hot. It, it, um, it allows the heat to come through it a lot more than some that are commercial grade meant for going in ovens and stuff like that. So you need to be aware that they're going to be super hot when you take them out of the microwave and out of the oven and stuff. Um, but I microwave my stuff all the time and put them in dishwasher all the time. Um, don't mix two glazes. Overlapping is fine. I've got lots of examples of allowing one glaze to overlap over the top of another and looking pretty cool when it does that. Um, sometimes it kind of slides down the side and 
doesn't break away as much on the inside. Um, this is three glazes used together so that you can see. Um, overlapping is perfectly fine. Um, carry the glazes by the bottom. Anytime that you're working with these, make sure you have underneath the lid and not just a hold of the lid itself because if you pick it up, it's going to splash. And this, if you do drop this by accident, which has happened from time to time, and to tell you the truth, I've done it myself too. So it does happen. If it does drop on the floor, we need to make sure that we preserve as much of this as possible. Get me, and I'll start um, scooping up and putting it back in as much as we can. Because the glazes are pretty expensive, we need to make sure that we always conserve whatever we can on glazes. So if it happens, do everything you can to not make that happen because it is a huge mess to clean up if you do drop a tub. So um, grab it by the bottom, if you can, by the bottom bottom, and but at least underneath the actual lip of this when you're picking it up. Don't try to carry too many at a time. Don't ever grab it by one hand. This is what happens to people. They think they've got it. They've got it by one hand and the lid flips off on the one side and then it splashes down so and then you get projectile ones because it goes forward and splashes so you usually coat the room and whoever's in it so um, be careful uh, whisks are hanging on the side of the table over there by the sink so there are five sets of whisks here you need to make sure that you are handing those off to people um, wash them in between you can totally use your hand to do this at this stage in the wet stage it is not um, toxic in any way shape or form but uh, it does kind of get under your fingernails and stuff like that so I usually try not to plus it wash it dries out your hands really badly I try not to get my hand down in there too often but if you do it's no problem um, glazes should be the consistency of cream so when I pull this open here and by the way, the lid has the name on it, and the tub has the name on it, so that you can find, here it is, um, you can make sure that the correct lid gets the, with the correct um, color. So the whisks, you want to make sure that you're totally going from the bottom of this. Scrape everything up from the bottom, and if you've ever whisked soup, you need to kind of go in a circular pattern upward, and that gets it to kind of mix up too. If all you do is stir sideways, the bottom is where the heavy stuff is, where the glaze is, and the top is where the water separates every day. If you do this, all you're doing is mixing the water with water and the glaze down with glaze. You need to make sure that that whisks upward. Um, but don't make too many air bubbles when you do this. So you know, go around, switch your directions, go upward a couple of times. Um, this white is actually pretty thin. This is more the consistency of milk, which I'll pick up and show you in one sec here. So what you should do is be able to pick it up and it should dribble off the end. This is a little more the consistency of milk than it is of cream. Make sure I don't drop this. Okay, so um, this is pretty thin. Okay, I'll pick up one of the other ones and show you what more the consistency of cream is. So if you have something really thin like this, like the white, I'm gonna coat something in white first. And I'm just going to set the whisk on the lid of the same color. And I'm going to dump the white. I'm going to actually recreate um, this kind of look on a piece. So I've got partially white um, about three quarters of the way across. And then I use the dragon's breath on both sides otherwise. So I'm going to do the three quarters because then I can... Um, just hold on to the piece without having to go back and do anything to it. If it's really thin like it is right now, which actually gloss white isn't a bad thing to be really thin because it does want to run. I'm just going to use my finger and just heal up a little bit. There's some drip marks going down the side. I'm going to take care of that. I'm just going to dab off the top here. Okay, so that's a good thickness right now for an under glaze. Um, set that to the side for a second. And bring out my dragon's breath make sure you are digging everything up from the bottom of the tub too some of them have a tendency to do what's called dead panning 
Dead panning is when it sticks to the bottom really, really hard. Um, it loses the, the flotation. It's called um, uh, viscosity, I think is how you say it. Um, basically, it's how much those chemicals will float down inside of there. Um, if it has lost that, I can use vinegar and give it so that it will like float again, basically. So let me know if something's dead panning really, really, really hard. But get all the way down through it. So this one is a little bit more the consistency of cream when I pick this up. It doesn't dri it dribbles off a little bit slower. So this is a good consistency. Till you're used to adding any water into it, make sure that you ask me and I will show you how to add some water to it. Um, if the glaze, this glaze is a little bit um, farther down in here. There isn't that much glaze down inside of there. So um, I'm going to tip it on its side and I'm going to roll this in here and pick it back up. Typically, you only want to do that. The white I held down in just a little bit longer because I knew it was super thin. Um, so, going to let it drip. Keep it upside down while you let it drip and that will get so that the drip comes up towards the, the rim instead of dripping off the bottom. So, there I've got the one side that will have some Just Dragon's Breath by itself and then it overlaps and gets that kind of um, pinkish kind of color in between or salmon kind of color in between where it overlaps on the white. And then I'm going to flip to the other side here and I'm just going to do the tip on the other side. Just so it gets that, um, three is always a good number of things, so I get basically three sets of colors going across it. So that is a glazed piece. When you um, get done with this, you can, um, you can scratch through it and it should be the thickness of a dime that's coming down here sometime soon. Um, so the thickness of a dime I can scratch through, think of how, big, how thick a dime actually is. Scratch through and see if it is about the thickness of a dime, especially in the overlapping parts like this. Um, and then you can just heal that with your finger a little bit just so that it, it goes away basically um, in what you're doing. If it's the thickness of a quarter you're way too thick and it's going to run right off of there and then you're also you're going to run into the possible problems of it not only breaking in the kiln when I have to take it out of there but the fact that we have to grind off the bottom like we had to with the the white and green one. Um, so the bottoms, I'm going to show you how to wash those. I have a second video that's actually already prepared with that washing the bottoms so I'm going to show you that quick afterwards here. Um, but just know that you need to wash the bottoms off to create what's called a foot. This has a good foot to it. Um, about a quarter inch is where we'll make it so that the glaze doesn't want to run off of the piece and it makes it so that it gives it a spot to stop. Also gives it so that it looks correct. Professional pieces, if you really do look at them, do have a foot on the bottom of them um, so that it won't stick to the, the shelf and all that kind of stuff. So um, mix the glaze as well before you're starting every 60 seconds. As 60 seconds goes on, now it's been at least 60 seconds since I've used the Dragon's Breath. If I went back to use it again, I would do another quick stir before I dip something else into it. Um, again, those glazes, depending on how heavy the particles are in there, the chemicals, is the f how fast they will actually separate. And if you ha let them separate, they're gonna look really goofy on your piece because they need everything in them to work correctly. They're gonna have like little spots of looking really clear or little spots of looking really odd. So, um, so make sure that you're mixing it every 60 seconds. Scrape the bottom, like I said, um, thickness of a dime. Glazes can be dipped, which I've done so far. They can be brushed or poured. So I'm gonna brush one onto another and I'm going to pour into it. First I'm going to pour into it actually. So I'm going to take some black and put it inside here. So the black is a little thicker first of all so I have to give a good stir. Now to coat the inside of a piece you need to actually pour it in and swish it around. Um, so inside, you never have to be as careful as what you have to be on the outside because inside, if it decides to run, it's going to run down inside of it. And it's no problem because it's trapped inside of there, basically. Um, it's the outside that you have to be super careful on because it's going to run off of the piece. So this is a good stir. This one was pretty deadpan, so I needed to make sure it was scraping the bottom really good. Once it's totally let go here, 
and I'm pretty good. So there we go. Everything let go pretty well. So I'm going to pour a little bit into a glass. Careful when you're doing this that you don't dump the glass or miss it like I just did. That happens. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to dump this in over top of here. I'm going to do the semi quickly. You don't want to wait too long on doing this kind of stuff, but this has a nice small opening so I can actually literally um, kind of work this around inside of here and then let go and dump it out. That now just coated everything inside of there. Don't ever try to brush it in or anything like that because you're never going to be able to coat it. Now, if it is too, too big of an opening to be able to do that with, you can also pour it in and um, pour it back out. I'll use the edge of this to show, no, I won't, to show you. Yeah, I'll use this. This one's too big to go with. So I'm going to dump some black into here. And I know it's not going to matter because I'm going to use black over the handle part too here. Um, dump the black in. And now I'm going to switch this around. And to rotate it until I'm sure it's coated everywhere. I'm going to be a little careful because I'm going to only pour it out one side. So rotating it all the way around. Now I have it coated all the way on the inside, so I'm going to pour it out. Now if this didn't have handles on it, I could pour while I'm twisting also and get it to coat everything around it too. So, But it had handles, so I needed to be a little careful that it didn't go out over top of the handles too much. It did a little bit. I can wash that off if I need to or scrape it off a little bit. Um, so um, that's how you do insides of things. Uh, and you can also just pour over the outside if you ever need to. Um, if I wanted to do kind of a splash um, pattern, make sure it's not a total splash at it. That doesn't look controlled in any way, shape, or form. It looks kind of elementary when you have massive splashes at things. Um, even this one's a little bit along those lines, but it does have a direction to it, and it is spattered you know, a little bit slower when it's done. This one I actually put on the wheel and spattered at it so that it got that kind of twist to it. Um, but no Duncan splashes. Um, Duncan splashes look like elementary, basically. So um, if you do pour something, like <coughs> pour kind of so that you get cool pour marks going down the sides. So, okay. Uh, brushing. Uh, brushing a piece. If I wanted to brush something on, pick the brushes that have the softest bristle, bristles to them. They pick up the glaze easier than the others. I'll just brush some black onto here because I know I want black and, and uh, sapphire on this one. So I'm going to make sure I get a bit of good mix again. When you brush, this is not like painting a painting. This is basically laying color onto there. You dip in and you come up and you lay it on. Dip in, lay it on. Sometimes people think they need to like sit here and brush and brush and brush and move it all the way around and all this kind of stuff. All you're doing is leaving brush marks behind on the piece. So you pick up and you just lay it on there and just go a little at a time. Sometimes you can put basically like a second if you want to brush and make sure that it didn't leave too much behind on one part. You can um, do a second pass, but for the most part, don't do the second pass on it. So I would coat this, if you're coating it with only one color, go one direction first, all the way across everything, and then it dries super quick because it's basically working like a sponge right now. It's called bisqueware because it's um, like a biscuit basically, how it will like soak into it. Um, so it's actually pulling it down into the little pores that are inside of there right now. Um, go one direction first, let it dry, and then go back and go the opposite direction. So this time, I, the first time I went out across it, this time I'm going to go across the other way. Then I won't have brush marks later on on things. So now if I wanted to do a second color on there, 
I can mix up my sapphire here that I mixed earlier. That one is definitely still the consistency of cream. And I can put my second color over top again. Again, just laying the color on, especially with the second color, because if you start brushing too much, you're gonna mix those colors together. And that actually doesn't work as good as letting them lay over top of each other and kind of work together. This combination looks like this, if it's done correctly. So it's got the black on the bottom and then the sapphire over the top. Um, so, and the, those, this one, by the way, the sapphire is super runny. So this one, you have to be very careful on the bottom. On the top, I can make it a little thicker over top so it will streak, but on the bottom, I need to be super careful. Um, all right, that is brushing. And um, inside, do that. Um, the calipers are here. Um, they are in the drawer right behind this um, screen, actually, that says play tools on it. The calipers you can use to um, grip the piece to dip down in, and then you only end up with little dots that you have to heal if you need to. Um, realistically, the calipers don't work exceptionally well because they're a little bit loose here. Um, our calipers are a little bit old, um, but they are there. You can also just use your fingers, so I'm going to dip this in black because I know the inside of this is going to be, this is part of the um, cookie jar that I just did with black on the inside. Um, so I'm going to pick up the color and I'm going to dip this and actually because I know I'm, I can't glaze the bottom of this because it needs to sit down on the shelf, um, I'm going to dip it so that my fingers are on the top here. And again, this is a little bit um, uh, not so deep right now, so I'm going to just pick it up on its edge here, make sure I get that everywhere inside. I have to dip it all the way so it's not getting down inside. Okay, so there. Now I'm going to have fingerprints on one side of it, and that's okay. I'm going to let it sit for a second here and before I touch it, my other hand, just so that it gets um, dry enough that I can pick it up without leaving fingerprints. And then I'm going to take my finger down inside of here and heal up that little fingerprint that I just did. There. So that takes care of where my fingerprint was. I can wash my hands and then I need to wash off the bottom of this to be able to sit down inside of the cookie jar. I'm going to set that off to the side right now. Again, I'm showing you washing the bottoms later. All right, um, stickers and tape can be used for resist decoration. So let's say I wanted to put a decoration on this one with a sticker. So with the sticker, you can buy your own stickers and bring them in. Um, I'm not supplying stickers for you, but here's a little dragonfly sticker that I'm gonna put on the side of this. Stick the sticker onto there. Make sure if you use something like this that it's on a part that is not um, needing to be food safe, uh, as long as it's sticking down to the clay itself. You could put glaze down first and then put a sticker over top of it and then pull it off to show the glaze through, but the sticker doesn't want to stick to it quite as much. So um, basically here I can just do this. I'm going to give it another little stir since I was in it before. I'm going to use the sticker for a second. I'm just going to do the spot with the sticker on it just to show you quick. So put that down inside of there. Overlap on the sticker itself. And then let it get to this stage. And you can peel the sticker off if you need to. You can use a needle tool to get and re release it, but then you have the little sticker spot, and as long as it isn't a super runny glaze, it will show that through when you actually do it. So feel free to buy some stickers and bring in to use for yourselves. Um, there is tape too. So we have masking tape without a problem. You can use that anytime. The masking tape sticks pretty well to the side of the pieces. You can either use like a full piece of it if you need to, or if you need to, you can cut. 
So let's say I wanted to make some kind of design with stickers on it like this. Uh, so you can put the tape on and then uh, dip it. You can also cut the tape down to littler pieces if you want to. There's a little bit of duct tape here. If you do want to try over top of another glaze, you can try it. Duct tape is about the only thing that will actually stick to part that's, parts that are actually glazed. Um, if you do this in the future for yourselves, you can go buy auto detailing tape. At, it's just 3M auto detailing tape for like um, doing on cars and stuff, pinstripes on cars. This curves exceptionally well around the side of pieces. Um, so I have a little bit of this here, but this is mine. Um, it's a little more expensive and I don't want you to, to waste, uh, but in the event you have something very special, you can talk to me about it. Um, but you can use those as resists, basically. Um, washback method can be used to show carvings. So for example, I would want the washback to show inside of here. You're going to want this on your pieces that were for the glass also. So this one is an example of a washback. And I've got lots of little details on the cookie jar here that I need to show through. So these are examples of spots that you want the glaze to show. So in here, I'm going to put a little bit of color in there. And I'm just gonna kind of tap to get the glaze to stick down in. Just gonna do a small portion to show you and then show you how to wash it back. So to wash it back, use a little bit of water and a sponge. And you can do this over the sink too. Um, basically just literally wash it back so that it sticks just inside of the um, just inside of the decorations that you want to show up. And that's your washback method. Um, again, here, the thinner the glaze, the runnier the glaze, the better, so that it will actually show those through again. Um, so, those work for that. Um, uh, washing the glaze and doing it again. Uh, make sure you let them sit overnight. No dunk and splash, I mentioned. No dust. So, this is very important. This is a health safety issue, is the no dust. Uh, basically, the glazes that we use in, with the liquid form that you've got here, no problem. Dust form, definitely a problem. They literally have things in them like iron, heavy metals, stuff like that, that you don't want to get into your lungs. If it gets into your lungs, you can't get it back out, basically. And so, eventually it will build up in your lungs and you will end up with some problems. Um, the silica, which I think I've already mentioned for you guys, um, working around the silica dust will also build up in your lungs and you develop something called silicosis. Um, for you guys that are in here for a very short period of time, it's probably never going to be an issue for me that lives in here year after year, day after day. It becomes a problem for me. So please, for my health sake too, please make sure that there's no dust around. Um, so, uh, washing the glaze off the bottom, I will show you soon. Um, scraping the side if the glaze is too thick. So if I glazed something, and I washed it off. I want to look down at the bottom where it actually connects right here and make sure that this isn't too thick right down where it um, shows. All I do is take the side of my nail and I um, go backwards. Don't go forwards because it will get under your nails. Just take your nail and go backwards on the bottom when it's still slightly wet and then you can get that right off of there without a problem. So um, believe me, if you don't do it, I will do it and I will train my TA to do it. And you will want to do it yourself because I know when I do it, especially if it's like two o'clock in the morning when I'm loading a kiln, I get a little grumpy and I may or may not do as, as good as you will do on things. So make sure you're really taking care of the bottoms of your pieces yourselves. Um, at college, they would actually, if they had to do it, they would make a big red X on the bottom of your pieces so that you realize for the rest of your life that you did it. I don't do that to you, but like I said, I get a little grumpy when I have to do it myself. So make sure that you're taking care of them. Um, all right, uh, they will connect, I already mentioned that. Um, glazes that are too thick will actually literally crawl down the side of it, which means there'll be a gap that will show up in your piece. Um, 
Black is one of the biggest colors that you can get that happening to, so be careful on the black that you don't get it too thick. Um, to reglaze a piece if you decide you don't like the glaze later on, and this would be one example of that. So this one actually was supposed to have two colors of glazes on it, but that color got swallowed by the black. Black is a very dominant color. If you put colors over top of it and they're thin, they can actually swallow it up. So that happened to this one. So I would actually want to reglaze this because right now it's just kind of boring black all by itself. What you need to do is you need to actually try to heat it up so that you can actually get it to stick to it because the glaze is not going to want to stick. If I dump this down in, um, typically it just runs off the side. The second I say that, then it decides to stick to it that time. But most of the time it runs right off of there. So heat it up with a hair dryer and dip it in while it's still warm and it will actually stick to the outer side of it. Careful because the second you touch it then, it will actually come off of there too. So you have to be very careful how you handle it after you've reglazed it um, to put in. But it can be. Beware though. If you reglaze, it becomes more brittle every time as you go. So um, it can actually crack or break and do different things to you if it goes in again. Um, but if you really don't like it to start with, it's better to reglaze it and see if you're going to like it later on. So um, to get past, um, try to get past your preconceived idea of what you think this piece is going to look like later on. Um, a lot of times people are just disappointed when they pull it out of the kiln and they go, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to look like. And it still looks really cool, it's just that it's not what they originally thought it was going to look like. So try not to get this idea of what 100% what you think it's going to look like and be open-minded <laughs> to it. I usually tell people, just walk down the hall and show it to two different people, and if their re reactions aren't, wow, cool, then maybe you can decide that you don't like it, but most of the time it does still look really cool. So, um, cracks in the clay um, will crack further, so don't try to glaze them, just spray paint the pieces. If there's a hairline crack in the, that you can see already, don't even try because it is, sometimes we've had them literally split in half in the kiln. So, I mean, it really, it's not even try. So, <coughs> just all we do is touch it with a piece of glue on the end of it so that it doesn't crack apart later on. Then we just spray paint the pieces. And they're decorative then. They aren't food safe, but they're decorative and kind of cool. Um, lace pieces go on the second firing shelves by sizes. Just like you've been doing at the first firing shelves, you guys have been doing pretty good at that. Please make sure you are putting them in by sizes. From here on in, those shelves are going to get dramatically full quick. So you need to make sure that you're saving the time on firing. It takes forever to load the kiln if you have to search for pieces through everything. So um, give yourself enough time to clean up. Glaze is very messy, and it does want to spread quite a bit. So make sure you are, if you get it on the table, that you use a sponge and... Typically, you do need to wipe it with a paper towel afterwards, too, because the glaze does kind of stick there. So um, that's one of the only things that I will want you to use paper towels on other than your hands. So, okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. That was a lot of information. Remember, this list is inside of there. It's better to see it all the way through once and know what you're doing and then go from there. So.